sessions back in order. Senator Estevez, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. At this time, I'd like to retract my, my question. All right, you may proceed. Point of information. Oh. Senator Speaker. Rodriguez, you are recon thank you. recognized on your point of information. Yes, thank you. And so just to um, uh, be able to um, address the point that Senator Estevez had brought up about whether the demographics and who we're, who we're covering matters. Um, I'm, I'm not an insurance expert myself, but in being able to work with the industry and working with the um, current health insurance plan, I would um, concur that absolutely it does, that the demographics, um, who the, the covered uh, individuals are, uh, do have an impact on, on the overall um, delivery of that um, health plan. So I just wanted to raise that point of information. Thank you, Senator Rodriguez. Senator Estevez, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So again, as, as I previously addressed, I think we do need to go back to the table with this bill, but really as, as alluded to by my colleague, Senator Espaldon, part of what we need to do is identify where the problem is. A quick legislative fix, but without a true background or understanding where the problem lies doesn't guarantee that we're fixing the issue and potentially may make it worse. So while I'm all in support of cost saving, I think there's more creative ways to get those cost savings. But more importantly, we need to do so with an understanding of what it is we're doing. Now, I, I, I'm, I've always been against somewhat blind legislation. So bringing in people who have a good understanding, and I, th I think there have been roundtables and public hearings done on this, but what matters is have we been asking the right questions? Have we been cre creative in how to solve this? Um, so looking at the, how the proposals are done and how the negotiating team does it, and when I speak about demographics, it's that when they ask for certain things, that's what the co insurance company is generally gonna provide them. If we're asking for the Cadillac, we're gonna get the Cadillac. But if we're more specific and in tune and more creative in what we're asking and how we're developing these, developing these plans, then we may be getting different responses. And I think that's where we're gonna find a lot of these cost savings. So tailoring to the demographics of which we are providing the services to, whether that means going down to further legislation that's gonna split them up into different groups, but still with the same commitment to providing premium services. And, and more than likely, I'm, I'm very confident that we'll be able to find that at better prices. And, and I'd be working, willing to work with my colleagues on that in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Estevez. On Bill 3, are there any other speakers wishing to speak? Senator Torres, you are recognized. Ms. Deuce Mossy, Madam Speaker, I rise in support of Bill 3 uh, on the basis that it, it is a cost-saving measure to the government. And we've discussed many needs of the government, and I think among many of these, we do need to emphasize preventative health care. And I would, I would be in favor of, of a cost-saving measure in the health insurance uh, provision that can be provided perhaps to shoring up the efforts of public health or shoring up uh, some of the needs of the Guam Memorial Hospital. And while there have been many concerns raised in Bill 3, both at the public hearing from which I, of which I attended and listening to our colleagues speaking here on the floor, I believe that Bill 3 is a start. It is a start towards fiscal responsibility where it has been demonstrated that perhaps in prior years, the most prudent option wasn't elected with our insurance policies. The bid process can begin later with a basic provision of services afforded to the government. And I think that if we start from a basic point of view and then include those areas where I think it can be beneficial to our public, for example, um, ensuring that all hospitals on Guam are included in insurance by insurance carriers of the government, that I think in my opinion is fundamentally uh, necessary because we not only are reinvesting in a facility, a state-of-the-art facility that can bolster the health care of our island, but it also addresses what I find is a, a rather unfortunate 
accommodation that many of us have to make, and that is seeking health care outside of Guam, especially where there's catastrophic health care, uh, health needs. Um, I'm in for favor of Bill 3 again. Let's begin with the basics. There are many other things that we need to do subsequent to Bill 3 with the negotiating bid, perhaps, the parameters of the bid. Um, but any measure that we have where we can clearly identify savings, and I believe that past negotiations have demonstrated that there are opportunities for cost savings. It behooves us to bypass or to ignore that fact, and uh, I, for one, think that if you need to get somewhere, you have to give up something in another area, especially in this climate where um, we are stretched for cash and we are looking for other economic gain. So I rise in support of Bill 3, and I urge my colleagues to please think of it at its most fundamental uh, intentions, and that is to realize savings where it has been demonstrated that savings can be realized. Sidious Maasi, Senator Torres. Is there any other member wishing to speak on Bill 3? Senator Bisco Lee, would you please preside? On the motion to place Bill 3 in the third reading file by Speaker Cholahi, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I support the intention of Bill 3 um, to force the government to spend less than when it has that option. And it, it appears from the evidence that Speaker Cruz has provided that the gov or that uh, Speaker has provided that uh, our government does have that option. Um, based on past past year's um, bids or past year's quotes and proposals. And um, of course, we all know areas that these savings could be used and that the savings we are, the government is in need of um, areas that can be improved and hopefully that this money can go to, and hopefully it, it can go back into health care. And I agree with the former speakers that, that, that alluded to that. Um, I think, however, that um, Bill 3 places a, uh, a burden on, on our negotiating team, and we are really putting our trust in them that uh, they are going to um, take care of the concerns that insurance companies have brought up, that an exclusive proposal, if we end up with an exclusive proposal, that it might, it um, that we don't want to end up with a, a carrier that is not going to be solvent for the term, and we need our negotiating team to be very diligent and, if necessary, um, put appropriate terms in the RFP to ensure that solvency will not be an issue, that uh, the standard of care, I mean, we've got benefits that are uniform, and so that's not really the question. We've mandated that benefits, the benefits that will be provided, but but the standard of care and the providers, of course, these are all issues, and the, and the location of this care. I think these are really important to the people of Guam. I mean, if, um, I know my family makes uh, choices based on, yeah, where would we have to go to th get this type of care? And um, I'm not sure if this bill solves this. I think we are really putting a lot of trust in the, in the negotiating team and a lot of um, really trust in these these uh, insurance companies that we're going to end up with something that uh, is good for us. I mean, unfortunately, the bill, when it defines um, most economic, it says we were going to pick the most economical and beneficial health care insurance proposal plan. It defines economical and beneficial as the lowest cost option. So pretty much it's the lowest cost option with the same benefits, and it doesn't give us any kind of other parameters to judge beneficial right, except for cost. Um, and I, I, I do agree with those who have brought up the concern that uh, 
you know, even, e even customer service, you know. I mean, we, we've enjoyed um, the competition, I guess, between the carriers for customer service when we've had the three proposals to choose from. And uh, we, we don't want to see that decline. And so I just, I just want to raise that we are, and if we can't pass additional legislation to assist the negotiating team in their negotiations or in their RFP, and I think that's really the critical time to do it is prior to their issuance of the RFP, to put additional factors in there that would, would ensure uh, what that beneficial, that what, what we're looking for in beneficial, solvency, you know, customer care, where the providers will be, that type of thing. If we can add to this legislation, I think that that would be in order. And, and so I just wanted to stand up in support of this bill. I think the government does need to cut costs where it is possible. And I thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Vice Speaker Chilahi. On Bill 3, are there any other, other members wishing to speak? On the motion to place Bill number 3 on the third reading file, Speaker Cruz, you are recognized to close. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to thank all my colleagues for their contributions to this discussion. I understand that this is a very difficult issue to, under, to comprehend. I'm not an insurance expert. I, I, I don't claim to be. I'm just looking at the memos that were sent and I'm just saying if we could have saved it, let's save it. I think many of you are correct about there may be other things that we need to address. I just want to caution everybody that the issue about cap, as I said, if you want to buy a $20,000 car, it's different than buying a $200,000 car. Corolla? Or you can get your Testa Rosa, whichever one. It's, it ain't going to be the same. Um, so, um, or you can say to your kid, yes, I will help you buy your first car. I will give you $10,000 for your car. And you pay the difference. And just make sure you're dealing with 12,000 employees, 8,000 retirees who don't like their premiums going up or the amount that they pay. And when you say, I'm giving you $4,000 and you make the difference, then you can handle that. I'm just saying that maybe one of the ways that we can address this is through this through this bill. Um, or we can get realistic about the, issue, the, the benefits that we're, ask, that we're asking for. But that's a whole other, that's a whole other discussion. Uh, you're all correct in, in raising those questions. The insurance carriers are much smarter than we are. They know that it depends on the split. They're, they're bidding to make sure that they get the enrollment and they underbid on one side in the hopes that they can, that knowing that the law says that you shall not charge a retiree more for the same level of service um, as a active employee. And uh, we cost a lot more because we're older. Um, and so um, that's going to change. I just want us to be do, uh, enter this with eyes wide open and um, I just thought that we could bring this out and, and have the discussion and I thank everybody for uh, their contributions to the discussion and I look forward to the coming months when we can and will be discussing other issues um, one of them in my bill I know some of you want some dual cap and um, I'd love to be able to uh, participate in that discussion at, at, at that later date. So, Madam Speaker, with that, uh, I thank you, and uh, I move that uh, Bill 3 be sent to the voting file. 
Thank you, Speaker Cruz. On the motion to place bill number three on the third reading file, is there any objection? Without objection, the motion is carried. Um, with the consent of the speaker, we are um, going to recess until 2 p.m. Thank you very much.